कृपा बिंदु दिया करु दास तृण पे खाती है ना गुरुदेव कृपा बिंदु दिया करु दास तृण पे खाती है ना सकल सहने बल दिया करो निज माने नमो ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेषाय भूतले श्रीमते जयपताका स्वामी नामिने नमो आचार्य पादाय निताय कृपा प्रदायिने गौरकथाधामदाय नगर ग्राम तारिणे नमो ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतागदाधरा श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे <coughs> ओम अज्ञातिरांध से ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुरन्मील ये तस्म श्रीगुरव नम मुखम कौति वाचाल भंगु लंगायते गिर यृपातम वंदे श्रीगुरदीनतारिण परमानंदमाधव कृष्ण चैतन्यश्वर हरे कृष्णा मै रेस्पेक्टफुल ओ बी सेंस इज टू ऑल द डिवोट इज देर एट कृष्ण कथा देश वाछा कल्पतरू भयश कृपा सिंधु भैव पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम अनकोटी वैष्णवृंद की जय जगद्गुरु श्रील प्रौपाद की जय इस्कॉन वर्तमान गुरुवृंद की जय हिज होलीनेस जय पता का स्वामी गुरु महाराज की जय हरे कृष्ण Hi Krishna so I'm <clears throat> happy to be here uh Krishna Katha Desh Yatra after a long gap I hope all of you are doing well it's always a pleasure to uh, be in your yatra to associate with the devotees out there yes I did have a physical association of all of you a couple of years ago but I'm always um, regularly in touch with all the devotees there and um, such a sweet and uh, growing and uh, sincere and amazing community you have there so um today i have been given this uh, wonderful service opportunity uh, to speak about the past times of our beloved guru maharaj it is certainly such a pleasure and such a privilege to get this opportunity to speak about him to speak about a pure soul to speak about this glorious pure devotee of lord shri krishna as i begin um, <coughs> the class i'm just reminded of this uh, past time which is mentioned in the mahabharat 
how when yudhishthir maharaj he organized an ashwamedha yagya he had this um, big huge bell there so the bell signifies if the bell rings after the ashwamedha yagya it signifies that the yagya is successful but this time when yudhishthir maharaj performed the yagya the bell did not ring so he was wondering what did what did go wrong so did he displease the brahmanas did he not do the yagya properly did he not do the charity sufficiently so he sent his ministers and so he sent his soldiers they went around the kingdom they asked everybody are you all happy are you all satisfied but there was this one brahmana he said i'm not happy and he hadn't come to yudhishthir maharaj palace to accept any charity so the minister says what can we do for you he said you send yudhishthir i will speak to him directly so when yudhishthir maharaj went and pleaded oh dear brahmana please come to my palace i feed you sumptuously and i give you nice charity please bless me so that i can complete my ashwamedha yagya so the sadhu said i'm ready to do that but i have a condition I said what is the condition he said first you give me the fruit of whatever you know 100 ashwamedha yagyas and then i will come so yudhishthir maharaj said i have no problem to give you the fruits of 100 ashwamedha yagya but the only problem i am facing right now is i have just completed my first ashwamedha yagya so let me complete my another 99 ashwamedha yagyas and definitely i'll give you the fruits of all ashwamedha yagyas to you but let me just complete this successfully and it will be completed successfully only if you come to my palace and you accept charity and you become satisfied so the sadhu says no unless you give me the fruits of 100 ashwamedha yagyas i don't come and yudhishthir maharaj says but i don't have them because i haven't performed it yet so now it remains like this the yudhishthir maharaj goes back to the palace palace doesn't know what to do so he's been worrying and worrying so one night draupadi ask why are you so much worried he said this is the problem the sadhu is not coming he's asking me to give the fruits of 100 ashwamedha yagya whereas i haven't even completed performing one successfully Draupadi says, "Oh, it's a very small matter. That's all. I'll bring the sadhu tomorrow." So she goes, speaks to the sadhu, brings him to the palace, feeds him, gives him charity, and sends him away. Yudhishthir Maharaj is surprised. How did you do that? I've been trying to convince him and convince him. And then Draupadi said something so beautiful. She said, "When I went to speak to the sadhu, he gave me the same conditions, but I told him, Sadhu Maharaj, according to the scriptures." when you leave your house you depart from your house thinking about a sadhu in the mind with all enthusiasm oh i want to go and meet this sadhu purush i want to go and meet this holy man if i if you think like this and you get out from you come out from your house then every step that you take is equal to 1 crore ashwamedha yagya so the fact that i came from my palace to meet you holy brahmana i have already performed so many ashwamedha yagya so here i give the results of all my ashwamedha yagyas to you please come to our palace so there is this beautiful saying which is also mentioned i think in the tulasi ramayan says that um, sant milan ko jaiye tyaje maya abhiman ek ek pag aage dhare kotin yagya saman when with that desire you make a move from your house oh i want to meet the santa i want to meet the holy sage that desire itself purifies you every step that you take is equal to 1 crore ashwamedha yagya so i was just thinking wondering that the fact that you have invited me on this virtual sangha to speak about this holy man in our lives his holiness jayapataka swami guru maharaj the every moment that we think about him and meditate about him and speak about his glories and then you coming to this place to give this class every step is like ashwamedha yagya crores of ashwamedha yagyas because we are remembering a pure devotee of the lord so my heartfelt thanks uh, gratitude to this yatra devotee is for giving me this wonderful service of remembering and meditating on guru maharaj so today i plan to do something different 
during this last two years of COVID, I have been speaking to various yatras and various JSS groups where I have um, spoken on length on 26 qualities of Vaishnav and how we see those qualities in our dear Guru Maharaj and I have spoken about various other uh, uh, pastimes of Guru Maharaj. But today what I want to do, I plan to do is, um, I don't know how exciting it will be for all of you, but um, <coughs> I have this uh, wonderful book which has been recently released. I think it's called um, Milwaukee to Mayapur. This is by Stephen J. Rosen, Satyaraj Prabhu. And this is the biography of uh, Guru Maharaj. So what I'm planning to do today in whatever this one, one and a half hour time is, um, I'm going to take you from cover to cover, this whole book, in brief, in brief, whatever is there, you know, whatever he has written. Of course, um, very, very, um, what do you say, brief biography of uh, Guru Maharaj is there, but it covers his birth and um, how he joined his con and uh, <coughs> his initiation, his sannyas, his important letters with Prabhupada, his stroke, his transplant, his dealing with um, his god brothers. So it's like a, you know, a little rough picture of Guru Maharaj's whole life. So that's what we will do today. And um, I don't know, mostly we hear so many pastimes of uh, Guru Maharaj. That is after he became Guru and Sanyasi and after Prabhupada left this world. But I think um, very less is known to the devotees of his uh, life before um, taking, uh, before becoming an initiating Guru. So this is this is quite a very interesting book. So I will just go uh, go through this whole book in a proper chronological order, the way they have presented it. So our dear Guru Maharaj, our beloved Guru Maharaj, he appeared in this world in 9th of April, 1949, in this place called Milwaukee, Milwaukee or Milwaukee. It's it's in Wisconsin, in America, in the United States of America. He was born to. John Herbert and Lorraine Erdman and his great grandfather he was um, he had migrated from Germany he was not able to speak English and he came here and settled in Baltimore and then how you know right from doing odd jobs to doing some carpentry work to selling some paints and slowly slowly along with his friend who was also from Germany how he established a big business which was called Badger Paint and Hardware. And, and it was so successful, they had almost like 66 branches all over and they were doing very good. So uh, Guru Maharaj's father was, I think they were, the siblings, around 13 siblings they were. And Guru Maharaj's father also, he was, um, he was very um, saintly minded, I would say, because he had also taken training of becoming a priest but later he could not continue, then he became a healer. Now healer is somebody who helps the people recover. So he was a healer in the military because he had a heart of a priest. He could not kill anybody. So they decided to put him in the healing department of military. So that is what he was doing. Whereas his grandfather had this huge business running and they had such a huge, beautiful house that Guru Maharaj says in this, in his uh, biography, in this biography that in the, during the Easter and, and Christmas time, people used to buy tickets to come and see the second floor of their house because it was huge and beautiful and they were, it was on near the lake and there were pools and there were billiard tables and tennis courts and gardens and um, everything, golf, uh, uh, place for playing golf and it was a very beautiful mansion. And then um, um, Guru Maharaj had two brothers. So Guru Maharaj's name was Gordon John. They used to call him J for short. But Guru Maharaj's um, brother was Jeff and Jan. So he had two brothers. And then um, his father and mother, they got separated. So when his father got remarried, then he had a cousin. He had a sister called Leslie. So they were three brothers and one sister and um, Guru Maharaj's parents got separated when Guru Maharaj was nine years old. So he had to face certain things early in his life and then he started 
staying with his uh, maternal grandfather and his maternal grandfather was very spiritual minded guru maharaj says in this book that once it so happened that guru maharaj got some what some what some skin infection and there were so many so he went to they went to they took him to a doctor but the doctor was not able to cure it they could not understand what is the reason for this infection so his maternal grandfather he was so spiritual minded he told him oh i can cure it so the grandfather how will you cure it he said nothing you just put your hand on every wart and you and you speak to the wart go away in the name of god come on go away in the name of god and guru maharaj said i did it you know putting my hand on every my fingers on every wart and saying go away in the name of god and he said miraculously the all the warts were gone so like that from uh, the very beginning his maternal grandfather was training him to keep faith on the power of the holy name of the lord so this was one uh, realization guru maharaj had very early in his life that oh my god oh my god the, the the name of the lord has so much power so that made an impact in his heart and one more incident early in his life was that his father was a wonderful gentleman but physically he had some kind of a birth mark which went up to his neck and face which was very distracting and very disturbing so people were not very comfortable with him though when they used to mix with him and talk to him they used to start liking him but at the outset because of that huge birthmark and later in in life when he was becoming old it was it started bleeding also so it was not a very good sight so guruma says that early in his life because of this thing you know he was able to make that um, difference of body and soul oh yeah you know person is different and body is different because he understands though his father may be having this particular mark on his body but as a person he is such a wonderful person so he was able to understand this difference yeah there is a different person and there is this different physical body as such so like that some small small incidents uh, you know made a good impact early in his life so he was uh, he was a very good student very smart student but because of certain family this he he was uh, not able to cope so well in between he got a little disturbed then he joined the st john's military academy and um, his sister uh, mother leslie she mentions in this book that how when guru maharaj was very young they used to go regularly to you know on to the church in sundays and one sunday guru maharaj was missing and everybody was searching him and there was a big you know commotion where was that little boy what happened to him and everybody was searching and what they find to their surprise that that guru maharaj went near to the altar and he was praying to jesus christ so guru maharaj had his two hands outstretched and he was talking loudly and praying and everybody was wondering that such a young boy and having so much devotion to the lord he escaped from everybody and is personally going and offering some prayers to the lord so like that early in his life he was showing certain symptoms of you know having so much faith on the lord on the name of the lord and then um, as uh, during his teenage times once he was playing in the garden so those days children had the slingshots you know they just play in the garden so gurmaj was playing with that and he hit a squirrel so when he hit the squirrel the squirrel fall down from the branch and he did it as a teenager boy but when it actually happened then he went running and all his friends went running and he was he started crying he could not understand why he is feeling to cry and he was crying and he was saying that we don't create life then how can we take somebody's life so early in the life all this realization of this body soul praying power of holy name not hurting other jeeva so he did not like it though he just played the game with others but he was not comfortable when the squirrel got hurt he felt very bad he was a good sportsman guru ma says he he used to like football he used to like golf he used to and he was very good in rifle i mean he he at the age of uh, around 11 or 12 he was among the 11 best people in the national rifle association and he was doing good job he was as he was an active sports person and then also um, in his young age he was like a um, assistant to the priest on sundays he used to carry those wafers or anything needs to be carried to the altar he used to help the priest but one day when um, guru maharaj went to help the priest he saw the priest is drunk and that disappointed guru maharaj and he took a step back that 
this is not the right thing to do you know how come being a priest he is drunk you know on a sunday and then um, uh, after studying for some time in the military academy um, he then shifted to brown university uh, so that was also a very reputed university he took admission in chemical engineering he was interested in science he was really enjoying his education so in between what happened is that uh, there was a guest lecturer at his college her name was timothy lady and she gave a lecture on teachings of buddha so she went at length explaining about buddhism and explaining how buddha when he was you know siddhartha prince siddhartha he left his house and how he saw a lady delivering a baby and he saw an old man and he saw a diseased man and he saw a dying man and how he changed the course of his life and the whole thing about buddhism now that made an impact on guru maharaj and for days together he was just thinking what is this birth death old age disease what happens what is this going i want to know more and um, he was so deeply thinking about it that um, he did not concentrate well on his studies and he failed in two subjects and because he failed in two subjects the university says that you need to go and take admission in some other university we are, we are not keeping you so then guru maj again came back to wisconsin he came back to milwaukee now after coming back that was a summer vacation so he did, he thought he will continue his education meanwhile it was summer vacation so he thought um, that he wants to go hitch hacking to san francisco because at that period you know those 1950s and all this hippie movement had uh, gained a lot of momentum and all these youngsters were going this way that way so guru maharaj he was inspired he said i he thought i'll go to san francisco so he made this hitch hacking trip to san francisco Now, when he reached San Francisco, his search for a guru or for some higher understanding did not stop there. He went to some bookstore, and he got some books. He was searching for some yoga ashram, so he did get into one yoga ashram who were teaching hatha yoga, and he did take some classes. But what happened? This yatta, this uh, ashram, this hatha yogi, he was a um, he was a pilot. He had a pilot license. but at the same time he was teaching hatha yoga he had a beautiful ashram with a swimming pool and after teaching yoga he was actually swimming with the girls in the bikini and when guru maharaj saw that he thought no i don't think i want to continue with him so then he went to bookstore you know back to the bookstore tried to get some more books and he got a book on buddhism and then he got some book on judaism and then he got some book on astral astral projection that was very interesting for him doing pranayam yoga controlling the life air coming out of the body and experiencing so he thought this is very interesting so he got deep into it and then the author of that book who had written about astral projection he actually went and met him so he searched for his house he went to the author's house he knocked the door nobody was um, you know opening the door so he was he just went to the backyard looking back door and then in the back door he saw this man was there and he was cooking some fish So then Guru Maharaj said, "Well, I am very much impressed by your book, and I want to talk to you." So then this man said, "Okay, come inside." And then this man said, "Look, I have written this book, but uh, I cannot myself do astral projection anymore because I have been grounded for two years. So uh, don't expect I can show you any miracle, or I can show you how to do it." Then Guru Maharaj thought that this person has written, but he himself can't show the out-of-body experience. So what should I do? He again went back to the bookstore, and he was reading some more books. And like that, he was trying so much. Where do I find Guru? So while he was doing all this, he thought in his mind, I think the only thing I can do is uh, maybe I should go to India because I'm not finding anything here. Meanwhile, what happened? He saw certain devotees in San Francisco chanting, and while chanting, they came. They were just distributing some leaflets, and they gave an one leaflet on Guru Maharaj's hand, and that leaflet read, "Stay high forever," explaining the name of Krishna, all attractive, Rama, the reservoir of pleasure, Hari, the pleasure potency of the Lord. Come and chant the Hari Krishna mantra. So he was very uh, inquisitive. So what is this? So he saw the address below, and he did search for the address, but somehow he could not get the address. So he thought, all right, forget about it. He kept the poster back, and he continued his search in the bookstore. And then after a few days, what happens? That he goes to this place called Golden Gate Park, 
and there again he met those devotees and they were um, chanting and doing kirtan so this time what guru maharaj did is he went and gave them a closer look on closer look when he observed their tilak and all it made him frightened so he suddenly ran from that place to far off he, he, he thought what is this happening to me why are my hair standing on the end I, what is this feeling that is happening inside me so he just ran and after some time when he became a little bit cool he thought uh, no i should not run away from them let me find out what is their uh, activities and what is what are they trying to do so he went back to that place by that time the devotees had already left <coughs> so he asked the other onlookers oh, where did they go they said we don't know where is their center but they keep coming here every week you know so you can just come back if you want to see them again so meanwhile guru maharaj said okay now i lost this opportunity and he was still thinking what to do after few days by krishna's arrangement he saw another poster that was advertising about rath yatra it said about festival of chariots or something like that and this time they had the address there so guru maharaj went he searched for the address and he went to the center now when he went to the center there was also an advertisement in the poster saying 25 cents for a vegetarian meal and guru maharaj was a vegetarian so he thought this is good i can have some nice vegetarian food so he took his 25 cents in hand and now he's here in this iskon center and this is rath yatra preparations are going on everybody is very busy and he's going and asking every devotee so uh, this is my 25 cent i want to give you and i need prasadam and they go to him go to him they just move you know asking him to go to some other devotee we are busy go to this devotee we are busy he was not able to understand whom should i give my 25 cents and finally somebody said go and give it to garga muni for sure he'll take it Now, i don't know if you are aware of this uh, joke in those old uh, old days about garga muni prabhu they used to call him garga mani because he was a good fundraiser and he would never lose an opportunity if it is something to do with money for krishna so they used to call him garga mani so they said you go to him and he'll definitely take your money so he searched who is garga man, muni and then he gave 25 cents and garga muni immediately took it prabhu took it and then he also gave guru maharaj the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam which was printed in india which shri prabhupada had bought he said here is your uh, book you take this home and you can come and have prasadam so guru maharaj was passing through the different room and then he went to this uh, place where everybody was taking prasadam so what he saw is that there were this big big vessels with prasadam and everybody was sitting in a round circle and having prasadam so guru maharaj thought maybe somebody will serve prasadam but was nobody was serving prasadam it was like a self service so guru maharaj thought oh this is like survival of the fittest you just take whatever you want so guru maharaj took his plate and he served prasadam meanwhile what happened as he was passing through the different you know this uh, preaching center he saw a very beautiful picture brijwasi print of krishna blue krishna sitting underneath a tree and just next to his feet there is a stream of water flowing cows it was very beautiful and this was some something that he saw for the first time and it attracted him so deeply so even while he was taking prasad he was just thinking that how can something be so beautiful what is this it just attracts my heart so much so beautiful looking picture so he had his prasadam and then after having prasadam he he came out of the center and what he sees in the center there is this jayananda prabhu he meets jayananda prabhu for the first time and he's trying to make this chariot so jayananda prabhu when he saw guru maharaj he said do you want to help guru maharaj said sure he said can you hold this guru maharaj said okay so guru maharaj was holding the nail and jayananda prabhu was beating it with the hammer and when when the ha- when the nail was almost done and the hammer was coming close to the edge then he then he would ask guru maharaj to remove his hand and then make the final uh, you know push so when guru maharaj saw that he said now can you do it guru maharaj said i can try and then guru maharaj did it so oh, you are doing very good now you continue so he asked guru maharaj to continue so this guru maharaj mentions that this was the most beautiful time that he had with jayan and the prabhu because he was so curious and he had so many questions and this and he then jayan and the prabhu was so loving so kind so sweet and humble and he was answering every question and all the while that they were making that ratha card he was talking about his guru that is prabhu pad and guru maharaj was very happy listening to all that so in between the, the conversation jayan and the prabhu showed him a picture 
he said this is what we are trying to make the ratha picture and it was looking very beautiful and huge so guru maharaj immediately said oh yeah so maybe within a year or two maybe another two years we will complete this ratha and jayanand varu said not two years two weeks and guru maharaj said impossible this cannot happen and jayanand varu said yes it will happen it's emergency we have to do it so then uh, you know following days Guru Maharaj had a wonderful time. He was helping Jan and the Prabhu, and he was, you know, helping to complete that uh, cart. So that was wonderful thing happening. And then um, during this time, something very special happened. When he was helping Jan and the Prabhu to make this cart, uh, Prabhu Pad's secretary he came out and he handed over beads to Guru Maharaj and said, "Do you want to chant? You can chant with the beads." So Guru Maharaj he just took a little break. he sat in a garden and he started chanting now he could not understand what is happening but that chanting was giving him immense pleasure he was enjoying the chanting so much all his hairs were standing on the end he was feeling to cry tears are coming he is not able to stop the chanting one round four round eight round 16 round 32 rounds and then finally he stopped then then he came back when he came back prabhupad secretary was searching for him where is bhakta j yes here i am what happened he said actually by mistake i gave you prabhupad's mala can you give it back to me you have it still he said yeah yeah i have it and then he said oh this is prabhupad's mala i just gave it to you by mistake i'll give you some other mala so i mean you know unknowingly you know guru maharaj had chanted on prabhupad's mala and that was maybe prabhupad's way of showering his blessings on guru maharaj and he got this first touch of a vaishnava's beads and you know his taste for chanting and everything he completely became ecstatic and and he decided i think i want to give it a try seriously i want to continue chanting and i want to continue i i like this place and i like these people i like everything about this place and he decided no i'm going to continue um, seriously so after that 32 rounds with prabhupad subid lot of changes happened so then uh, uh, finally the rath yatra happened and he saw hundreds of devotees and all are just you know you know jumping and you know up and down and guru maharaj had done hatha yoga so he was thinking why are these people jumping up and down maybe they are trying to bring their life air up by the chakras are they trying to do something like that or oh, maybe if we jump up and down then our chakras will get activated maybe we can bring the life air up he was just trying to calculate all that way and was getting pretty confused what is the reason behind these people's jumping like this and then he got hold of this book of prabhupad called easy journey to other planets and that clarified lot of his questions so he found it very interesting and he read the book cover to cover so then he decided that i want to shave up so jain and the prabhu shaved up and now gurmaj was you know completely in the temple whereas his parents are waiting for him to come back to milwaukee his grandfather is thinking that maybe he will continue to take over the paint business his father is having some other plans but gurmaj already thought i know where i want to go and this is my destination i like this people and i want to be here so you're already shaved up now um gurmaj had been hearing about prabhupad but he hadn't seen prabhupad yet Prabhupada never came for San Francisco Rath Yatra because there was a visa issue. So Prabhupada was in Montreal. So Guru Maharaj went to the temple president and said, "I want to see Sri Lal Prabhupada. Can I go to Montreal?" So temple president said, "No, you can't. There are some services here, and it's not necessary. Prabhupada will come here. You wait." So Guru Maharaj just came back from his temple president's room. but his in his heart of heart he was not able to accept it he wanted to desperately see shila prabhu so he spoke with the other senior vaishnavas and then they were all saying well actually if you meet prabhupad once it will be very inspiring and that will help your krishna conscious journey so then he decided that i'm not going to listen to the temple president i'm going to meet uh, shila prabhupad so he just left so before uh, uh, going to montreal from san francisco he went to new york and there he saw prabhupad's first center that is 26 second avenue there also he met devotees so during that time there was only this two three centers maybe san francisco new york and the um, uh, montreal uh, rented place so he went to new york and then from there he went to montreal so he reached montreal and montreal is definitely a very very special place because 
it was at this place that Bhakti Vinod Thakur in 1896 had sent by courier, by postage, the book of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Life and Percepts. So, I mean, that time Bhakti Vinod Thakur had this desire that this knowledge of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must reach to everybody in the Western countries. So, he had sent this uh, book to MC Gill University. And that book, I think, I think, still, if you go to that library, it was in a small brown postage packet written Calcutta, India and he had sent it in 1896 the same year that Srila Prabhupada appeared <coughs> in Calcutta. <coughs> so the book went to Montreal and the person who is going to 70 years later you know actually open the book and teach the westerners had also appeared in India simultaneously at the same date. And of course, 70 years later Prabhupada goes to that same city Montreal and he is doing his preaching and teaching about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Guru Maharaj read, uh, reached um, Montreal. Now he wanted to see Srila Prabhupada. He was very eagerly waiting and uh, Prabhupada enters the room. Guru Maharaj is among the crowd. He is waiting to see Prabhupada and then Prabhupada enters the room. And as soon as Prabhupada enters the room, now because Guru Maharaj had done this Hatha Yoga and all, he was able to see auras. So he saw Prabhupada's aura, it was very powerful, he saw a yellow color light and he saw a white color light and he had never ever seen such an amazing thing in his life, the whole room was filled up with Prabhupada's aura and he was completely awestruck and then he paid his uh, obeisances, whatever and then Gargamuni introduced Guru Maharaj to Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, this is Bhakta J, and he's been serving in our San Francisco center. Prabhupada looked at Guru Maharaj and he told Gargamuni, bring him for lunch tomorrow. So next day, Guru Maharaj had a lunch appointment with Prabhupada. So next day for lunch, Gargamuni Prabhu was sitting on one side, Brahmananda Prabhu was sitting in one side, Guru Maharaj was sitting in the center and they were waiting for Prabhupada to come for lunch. And Guru Maharaj said that because in those days Guru Maharaj was very skinny and Brahmananda uh, Prabhu and Gargamuni Prabhu, they were you know, very healthy. So it was a scene to see, you know, in between them he's like crushed and he's waiting. And finally Prabhupada arrives and then they all have prasadam together. And Guru Maharaj remembers what he had for prasadam. He said there was kadhi and there was curd and cauliflower pakoda and curry sauce and the whole menu, he says. This was his first menu, first lunch with uh, Srila Prabhupada. So, while Shla, well, Guru Maharaj is taking this rice and curd and all, Prabhupada is asking him some questions. So, then Prabh, uh, uh, Prabhupada was explaining him very nicely, okay, do this, do that and all. Then, then Guru Maharaj said, um, I am thinking to go to India. Then Prabhupada said, not necessary. You stay here and you continue. When the right time comes, I will tell you when to go to India. Then Guru Maharaj asked him question that, um, Prabhupada, I am able to see different kind of lights you know, some when people enter, go, I can see everybody's aura. Then Prabhupada simply smiled and said, Chant Hare Krishna and you will no more see these lights. And Guru Maharaj said that that one lunch date with Prabhupada changed his life forever. He was so inspired and in his heart of hearts, he decided, he is my guru. That's it. I want to surrender my life to him. I want to serve him. He was so fully satisfied. After reading so many different books and meeting so many different people, finally he thought, I have met my guru. He was very happy. So then um, in Montreal, the center was on the third floor. They had rented a uh, bowling alley. So it was a rented place and uh, devotees were very enthusiastically doing service. So Guru Maharaj decided to stay there for uh, some time in Montreal. And, and it was just maybe he met Prabhupada and within uh, two weeks Prabhupada said he'll give Guru Maharaj initiation. Now you can imagine how things are going in such speed. He just saw the devotees at the Golden Gate Park and he just started serving, helping Jayan and the Prabhu and few days there in San Francisco and now that he's, he saw the New York temple and then he came to Montreal and he met Prabhupada and he's already getting initiation. So. On July 24th, 1968, Bhakta Jai became Jai Pataka Swami or rather Jai Pataka Brahmachari because at that time he was not sannyasi. So he became Jai Pataka Brahmachari and Prabhupada said, You are the victory flag of Krishna. 
So this was Guru Maharaj's name. So he was happy and that uh, lecture Guru Maharaj remembers, that initiation lecture, Prabhupada spoke very deeply about 10 offenses, how they should avoid 10 offenses and so many interesting things. And in fact, Prabhupada um, personally taught, uh, showed to Guru Maharaj, this is the way you should chant, do it properly and you know, he spoke very intimately and nicely. So he was happy. So now the initiation is over. Now, as soon as initiation was over, Guru Maharaj got the visa for USA. So he left. Now, Prabhupada left. I'm sorry if I'm... Yeah, so as soon as initiation was over, Prabhupada got the U visa for US, so Prabhupada left. And uh, Hamsa Dutta Prabhu was the temple president of Montreal. After two weeks, he also left because he wanted to open a new center in Vancouver. So it has just been two weeks, you know, 15 days that Guru Maharaj took initiation and they told him, now you are the temple president for Montreal temple. Kindly take care of the temple. Now he's just 15 days. He took his first initiation and he's temple president. And then he has another four devotees with him to take care. Now how is he supposed to pay the rent? What is he supposed to do? Because those days they didn't have any steady income. So they had to work outside to maintain the temple. So then Guru Maharaj um, took up a job. So initially for six months he was working as a welder. Welding frames, you know and um, some kind of bed frames and then it was a team of people who had to work so he makes certain things and then he has to pass it to the <coughs> other team member and they put some coil and like that they had to uh, you know together do it so Guru Maharaj says that uh, there were also some girls in the in the team and they were very very flirtous they were fl they were flirting and Guru Maharaj because he was a brahmachari he was not talking to them so these girls felt that this Guru Maharaj is anti-social, doesn't talk, doesn't you know communicate with them. So they were finding why this person is like that. And but Guru, Guru Maharaj was not able to explain to him that I am you know following this Vedic culture and I'm a brahmachari and I can't you know interact with all of you. Then after some time, um, he started working in a cafe, which was a uh, which was A and W beers, A and W root beer. That was the name of the company which had sponsored that cafe. And Guru Maharaj was working there. He was cleaning floors and all that was his job. Now the problem was that they were also serving meat there. So somebody went and complained to Prabhupada that Jaya Pataka Brahmachari is serving in a place where they serve meat. So Prabhupada asked Guru Maharaj, "What are you doing there? Do you serve meat?" Then Guru Maharaj said, not serving, I clean up. After they eat, I clean up the dishes and I clean up the um, floor. So then Prabhupada said that in the Manu Smriti, it says that those who give money for buying meat, those who purchase meat, those who cut and cook and those who sell and those who eat, all those people or those who serve meat, all those people will be part of the sin, sin of eating meat. But those who clean after the meat is eaten, you know, they don't have any sin, so it's all right. So that gave a relief to Guru Maharaj because he had no choice. He had to pay the bills of the Montreal ISKCON Center and he had to work. So that's what he was doing. Then for some time he worked in a record shop with uh, Chit Sukhananda Prabhu. So their job was to, you know, put those records in the envelope, seal them and send it. So during that time, Guru Maharaj said that sometimes he used to go to those fire exits. Every every company has some fire exit place. He used to go there and chant his rounds. And then when they used to come and ask, where, are, where is these two people? And then they used to come out and say, no, no, we were just using the restroom. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't see you. Come, come, continue your work. And then for some time, um, he was also working in some other place. So like that, you know, he was somehow managing chanting of his uh, rounds. As far as reading... Those days, not many books were there and there was no book about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Srila Prabhupada had given a permission to read a particular book, uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Volume 1 by Srila Prabhupada's godbrother, Professor Sanyal. Otherwise, Prabhupada was not allowing to read any of his godbrother's book, but this particular book, he said, okay, so Guru Maharaj was reading this book very nicely. So, in that book, well, Guru Maharaj is a good reader and you know, very good listener, very sharp listener and reader. So, he picked up a point. In that book, it was mentioned that Mm, Haridas Thakur was um, 
chanting loudly when we chant loudly if we are feeling mentally distracted then that can help us if we do our chanting loudly so gurmaj got caught that point and he started chanting very loudly his 16 rounds so loudly so as to that as if the the lungs will blast out of his body that much loudly he was chanting and all the devotees around him got very irritated they went and complained to prabhupada that this jayapata ka brahmachari is chanting so loudly so prabhupada immediately called him in the office and he says yes what is your explanation why are you doing this everybody is getting disturbed then he said prabhupada actually that that book i read by professor sanyal it says that if you chant loudly then you don't get mentally you know if you're getting mental desires or anything kind of a distraction it can be controlled so that's what i was trying to do then prabhupada said um, okay very good very well but don't do it in the temple hall you go in some garden and do it you know go little far off so then there was this um, uh, garden which is a little bit far from the center it was actually on a small kind of a hill so there guru maharaj went and he was doing his that place is still there mount royal and guru maharaj went and he did this chanting there but he didn't stop chanting loudly very uh, you know uh, passionately he was chanting very loudly he was chanting his rounds then um, guru maharaj wrote a letter to shila prabhupad saying that um, i want to learn bengali so at that moment in that letter prabhupad said no they are not required what will you do by becoming a scholar you want to become a bengali scholar it's not required you are preaching in this area so here nobody understands bengali so what you will do that's what prabhupad said at that time so then guru maharaj thought he he just gave up that thought but whatever he was he was a very fast learner and very inquisitive and always wants to do something new and adventurous by and then meanwhile guru maharaj also got a second initiation and second initiation happened in new york so now just the first initiation completed and then within few months the second initiation was completed and then guru maharaj went to toronto and he opened a new center there so there the during prabhupad time it was like this president treasurer and secretary now at that time what happened is that in those areas people were speaking french and guru maharaj was not able to fr- speak french fluently so he thought that maybe my treasurer shri pati prabhu he should become temple president because he speaks very nicely french so maybe he should be temple president i should move to some other place meanwhile this uh, thinking was going on and then another devotee came to that place jagadish prabhu and lakshmi moni mata ji and um, they were also doing very well so guru maharaj decided to hand over the toronto temple presidentship to them and he wrote to prabhupad that what is my next service what should i do so prabhupad asked him to come to los angeles and then prabhupad but told him that maybe you should go to india achutananda swami is already i mean achutananda swami is already there so you go to india and um, help him there that's what but 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 if you are going to india i want you should go on long term basis at least you should have two years visa and you go at that time so guru maharaj said fine he was happy finally he got a chance to go to india but but again prabhupad sent a message that not now because achutananda Uh, prabhu or swami whatever he was at that time uh, he didn't have his own place so he was living in madhav maharaj gaudiyamat so prabhupada had written a letter to him saying that don't stay there in madhav maharaj gaudiyamat i'm sending you money hire your own place stay separately so when you are ready you let me know i'll send jay pataka that was the thing so till now he didn't get any favorable reply from achutananda prabhu so um, Prabhupada was waiting. Meanwhile, uh, Guru Maharaj said, "What next? What should I do?" So there was this Rupanuga Prabhu who was opening a center in Chicago, and he told Prabhupada that, "Can I take with Jay Pataka with me? I need help." So he said, "Yeah, wonderful. You please uh, take him because he was opening some center and also." He said, "Fine." So then uh, Guru Maharaj and Rupanuga Prabhu they they were in a Volkswagen. and they were going towards Chicago. Now, meanwhile, what happened? Guru Maharaj did not have a driving license. but still rupanuga prabhu asked him to drive so gurmaj was driving he was sitting meanwhile what happened while driving only gurmaj felt drowsy and he just slept and the there was a little accident so the car went off track and, and the, the the tires got logged on the gravel they were on this side so uh, rupanuga prabhu said something very nice at that moment when that small accident happened 
Rupa Nagar Prabhu said that when the car was moving like this, he said, I was just remembering my wife and my child. So Rupa Nagar Prabhu said, look, this is the difference. When the car was going sideways, you were chanting Hare Krishna and I was remembering my wife and child. That's the difference between a Brahmachari and Grihastha. Because Guru Maharaj was, even while this accident was happening, he was chanting Hare Krishna, you know. He was remembering Krishna at that moment. So that is a statement he made. I thought that was uh, wonderful. So then uh, finally, um, since this accident happened, Rupanagu Prabhu told him that, look, if they come to know that you are driving without driver's license, there will be an issue and I have to claim insurance money. So I'll tell them that I was driving. So meanwhile, um, they were taken to the hospital. Guru Maharaj had no, uh, uh, what do you say, no injuries, but Rupanagu Prabhu did have some injuries. So, but Rupanagu Prabhu told Guru Maharaj that you just leave. Don't, don't even come to meet me in the hospital because again, we'll have some legal problems. If they come to know you were driving, they may investigate some interrogation. You just leave, you just leave. I'll manage everything here. So the nearest center was uh, Colorado. So Guru Maharaj just went to that center because he is somewhere now where to go next. So he went to Colorado center. So in Colorado center, Guru Maharaj was treated like VIP because in that center, everybody was just few months old. And Guru Maharaj was one year old in ISKCON. So that was like a senior devotee. So they became so happy. A senior devotee has come who is one year in ISKCON. So they were all asking his guidance. So they told that in our um, Colorado temple, there are two Matajis, uh, Akuti Mataji and one other uh, Mataji. And they don't know how to wear sari. Since you are a senior devotee, can you help them? So Guru Maharaj said, yeah, I can, I can try. So um, in that center, they had a Brijwasi print of, you know, uh, Vrindavan, Radha, Krishna, Gopis and all. So Guru Maharaj took a sari and he was looking very carefully in that print and he wore sari himself. And he showed those Matajis how to wear the sari by wearing it himself. So and then Akuti Mataji, she learned, okay, fine, this is the way the pleats have to be and this is where it has to be tucked. So that was a very special uh, pastime that happened in Colorado. And then uh, Guru Maharaj became co-president with uh, Bhagavan uh, uh, Prabhu for Chicago temple. So then while he was serving there in um, Chicago, he got a telegram. He got a telegram, go to India. Achutananda's letter is favorable, go to India. So I think that telegram came from Gargamuni, that Prabhupada is asking you to go to India. So Guru Maharaj was very happy. Finally, he's going to India. So he went back to Toronto temple. Then he went back and tried to get some Lakshmi from the congregation because he had to travel. So he thought, there I have some contacts and I'll ask some Lakshmi and arrange my flight ticket. Because who is going to give him the flight ticket? So finally he arranged some Lakshmi and then he flew. And that flight was historical because he had to take so many stops and so many places. But it was the cheapest flight, just $114. But it took so many hours because he had to go Montreal to London, London to Brussels, Brussels to Bombay, Bombay to Calcutta. There was something called Iceland Airways and there was something called Brothers Airways and all these airways. And, and those days the flight was not like it will directly go. Every uh, stop like a bus stop, you know, like we have this train stations or bus stop, it will stop everywhere. So when he went from Brussels to Bombay, it was not just Brussels to Bombay. It was it was like Brussels to uh, Rome, Rome to Cairo, Cairo to Yemen, Yemen to Karachi, Karachi to Bombay. So it was so tiring. It was like one and a half day by the time he reached Bombay. And finally, when he reached Bombay, he just tried to make some phone calls. Nobody was lifting phone calls. So he doesn't know what to do. And, and more than any, he was completely sick. By that time, physically exhausted, completely sick. And more than that, he got a cultural shock in Bombay. As soon as he got down, there was one lady who was a leper. Like, you know, like in India, we have beggars with a small baby and coming to Guru Maharaj and saying, you know, kuch bakshish, 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 paisa, paisa, give some money, give some money, bakshish de do. And Guru Maharaj thought, what is this? Why is there no security? Why is this lady coming to me? What is this happening? He got completely confused. And then from Bombay, he went to Calcutta. And he says when he went to Calcutta, he felt, okay, this is little more civilized than Bombay. At least people are not falling on me. You know, what is this happening? So finally, he reached Calcutta. So that means in the June of 1970, first time Guru Maharaj has put his lotus feet in Bharat Bhumi. He came here in 1970. Now he was happy, his dream fulfilled. For a long time he wanted to come to India. Now what happened to his horror? Achyutananda 
Swami had not spoken truth. He was still staying in Madhav Maharaj's Gaudi Math. But whereas he had told Prabhupada that I have a place, you can send Jai Pataka Brahmachari. So when he came there, he saw no, they are, he is still staying with the Gaudi Math devotees. So Guru Maharaj also had to stay with the Gaudi Math devotees and he stayed there for two months. So while he was there, he he found one thing very funny. In that Gaudi Math, when they were asking them to take Prashad, they used to make people sit according to their initiation date. So when they ask when they ask you to sit, they will ask, "Kab liya initiation? Kya date? Date? Aapka? Aapka? Like that, they will ask that date. And when they ask Guru Maharaj, yeah, what date you took initiation? So there was another uh, Brahmachari sitting there. They pushed that Brahmachari. Hey, you go. He'll sit here. So like according to initiation date only, you should sit. Hi- there was a hierarchy system and Guru Maharaj found that very funny. What is this happening? According to the date, you have to sit. And there, uh, uh, Guru Maharaj was happy one way because in America, he had seen only one sannyasi, that is Srila Prabhupada. But here he was seeing so many sannyasis and he saw, oh, this is the culture, or oh, this is the way sannyasis have to be respected, this is what happens in India. So every day for him it was a learning process. And when he was in Montreal temple from Pradyumna Prabhu, he had already learned Devanagari script. And now here in Calcutta, he started picking up Bengali, started speaking in Bengali. And now there was this one thing, he was given the service of doing shopping. So he had to go to the market every day for buying vegetables or everything, whatever is required for breakfast or lunch. So now when he goes to the market, he has to talk with the local people. So he just picked up Bengali, you know, speaking with those local vendors, speaking with local people or sometimes organizing some program, going for house programs, engaging in conversations. So like that, he picked up Bengali. And for two months, he was staying in Gaudiamat. And after that, they had their own separate um, place and they started the ISKCON uh, center in Calcutta. So um, there, um, it was on rent. And then, uh, then after some time, they moved to 3C Albert Road, which was also on rent at that time, which now is our 3C Albert Road, Radha Govinda Center. But those days, they had taken it on uh, rent. And then, after Gurmaj is all settled and all, Prabhupada comes to India. This is all happening very quickly. It's not years, just months and days. 68, 70, that's it. August 29th, 1970. Srila Prabhupada is there in India with his white elephants and he has landed in India. And Guru Mahajan was so happy to um, see him. And then um, Prabhupada calls Guru Maharaj one day and says, would you like to take sannyas? And Guru Maharaj said, whatever you say, Prabhupada, as you like. And uh, one very nice thing Guru Maharaj mentions, he says, first diksha, second diksha, you have to ask from Guru, I want this diksha. But the third diksha, you don't ask it. Guru gives it on his own. If he feels, you are capable. If he feels, then he will ask, you want to take sannyas like that. So Guru Maharaj was very happy that, yes, my Guru has considered me capable of getting the uh, sannyas diksha. So he was very happy too. And then September 10th, 1970, on the day of Radhashtami, Guru Maharaj got his sannyas diksha. So he became Jaya Pataka Swami. And what was his age at that time? 21 year old young boy. So he became the 11th sannyasi in the history of ISKCON. Because when Prabhupada had come to India August 1970, he had already given nine people sannyas in America. And now he came to India, so the 10th person is Achyutananda Swami, gives him sannyas, and 11th is Guru Maharaj, he gets sannyas. So Guru Maharaj was very happy. Now what happened? In the 1971, Tamil Krishna Maharaj had with lot of hard work dealing with those Mahamadans, you know, Muslim people had acquired five acre land in Mayapur. And Prabhupada was so happy, so happy. And they had made a grass um, hut there and devotees were staying there. So now Guru Maharaj was uh, sometimes in Calcutta, sometimes in Mayapur. So in Mayapur, Guru Maharaj was very happy because there, since Guru Maharaj was a science student, 
he was making a big research cow dung has how much phosphorus cow urine has what what happens with this how to use this in a better way how can we get a better yield so the farmers became guru maharaj's friends because he was teaching them sophisticated techniques of how to get better yield in their farm land and they were teaching guru maharaj bengali and guru maharaj was teaching them farming so it was wonderful and guru maharaj was also very happy doing that uh, farming work and every day he had to go uh, 45 minutes in his bicycle buying things and then and then slowly the construction started after the grass hut they started the lotus building then they started the long building and sometimes he has to go calcutta mayapur get some you know sometimes some because it was mayapur was a village and there was nothing available and then locally also buying some nails buying cement buying this he had to go in his um, bicycle and the budget that they were given weekly was 35 rupees and that was not enough for having grand prasadam so guru maharaj approached tamil krishna maharaj and said uh, i want to grow something can i grow something and tamil krishna maharaj was not that he said i don't know what you can grow here he said no at least i can try he said okay you try growing something so he started growing tomatoes and it was wonderful successful and then he started growing radish and it was growing radish in tons and the devotees got so bored of radish they said jai pataka swami please stop radish don't grow because we're not able to eat radish anymore so like that he was and then lotus building construction happened and um, a lot of things was going on and guru maharaj says uh, very beautifully that when i was a student i always thought that i want to do something challenging in life but the true challenge uh, i was uh, enjoying in this iskan movement because every day was a challenge i you know you have to cook you have to do farming you have to do puja you have to preach you have to drive you have to do shopping you have to do construction every day you have to do something new which you have never done in your life before for example tamil krishna maharaj when prabhupada was asking them to construct he was discussing with bhavananda prabhu that how are we supposed to do that prabhupada is asking us to do but we have no knowledge of construction when and we, when they said that to prabhupada prabhupada said what knowledge is required for construction brick brick upon brick and brick upon brick like that you make a building that's all over so they said oh really brick upon brick and brick upon brick and the building comes oh yeah it is so simple we'll do it prabhupada and they did it actually so 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 guru mara says that every day was a challenge you don't know how to do this but you have to do it and that's what prabhupada says and you will have to do it so every day how to do it how to do it and learning from different people and every day was a learning experience and you know they were spiritually growing and they were intellectually growing and they were physically growing they were all just 19 20 year old boys and so many things happening in their life every day was such a challenge for them then um shila prabhupada came to mayapur and he was telling them uh, when he was sitting in the grass hut Oh this is so nice this is so satvik on the bank of ganga in this grass hut chant our rounds but no we have to preach and if you want to preach people will not come if we are in this facility we have to make a big city where 50000 people will be living and guru maharaj was thinking to himself 50000 people really we are just five people in this grass hut in the middle of nowhere in this village and prabhupada is saying that there will be 50000 people here really and they're not able to believe what is prabhupada talking about there is no facility here and we just five people here so anyway um the lotus building construction started sometimes the 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 uh, laborers used to give them so much trouble so, suddenly they will make like a union and they'll say we don't want to work sometimes all these sanyasis they just threw their dandas and they went and started mixing the cement okay you don't want to work don't work we will work we'll start plastering the walls and when these people saw that these sanyasis oh my god they're not only like a with danda and sit and giving blessings they can actually work when they want to they put the dandas aside and started working then those laborers came back no 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 uh, swami ji you don't touch we will do it will do it and they came back so every day they used to face new new challenges getting works done from different people and sometimes they used to disturb them by playing some big big music nearby areas they used to play some mundane music and guru maharaj was so sharp when they were banging like that guru maharaj also went on the top of the long building and he also tied a big chonga you know i don't know what you what do you say in english chonga is like a big amplifier the huge one and he also tied a big one and playing our hari krishna music more loudly than their mundane music so they also got a headache that oh my god they're playing it so loud so they also lowered their volume so like that you know always challenging and and then once a cobra came up because there's there's so many things lying it's a vast 
vast green garden green not garden green wild area all the weeds and so many things are happening so once in the in the pile on inside from the pile of the bricks a big cobra came out and prabhupada was right there at that time and then guru maharaj immediately ran to his room and he got his gun he had a gun and he shot the cobra and he was too good at it that's what his god brothers used to say because he was also in the national rifle association just the right shot and the cobra so like that he he was always in a very protective mood like his god brothers say that guru maharaj was like a big big uh, big brother always protecting his other god brothers any issue they know they can go and stand behind jai pataka swami and he will go and you know he'll fight it out so like that um, uh, then prabhupada asked him to come with him for kumbh mela so guru maharaj with all other devotees they went to alahabad and they asked uh, prabhupad why are we going to this kumbh mela so prabhupad said because we want to take association of sadhus and guru maharaj said in my heart i was thinking to take association actually for to give association because with guru with prabhupad's association everybody will become uh, purified so like that uh, prabhupad uh, gave them lot of association he personally took them showed them places in alahabad like the bindu madhav temple the dasha ashwamedha ghat uh, and so many different places and i gave so many wonderful classes there and guru maharaj was very happy and enjoying prabhupad's association once they were taking bath in the ganga and suddenly they said come on move 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 it and guru maharaj thought what happened why is everybody asking us to move then they said no the naga babas will come so then you know guru maharaj was wondering you know and then somebody told them if you don't move aside this naga babas they don't care they may just hit you they may just push you you should be very far from them and once when they were walking they saw that one big mathadish was sitting on an elephant on a, in a big procession and all his disciples were walking around him and when prabhupada saw that he said this is not vaishnav culture we should have deities on the elephant and we should walk down not that we sit on the top of the elephant and prabhupad and and guru maharaj was hearing this all very carefully all the small minute instructions and whatever prabhupad was telling them and then one uh, lecture prabhupad said in um, kumbh mela that if you have become a hari krishna devotee that means you have done so many yagnas so much sukruti you have accumulated so much good karma you have done that's why you have become a devotee today then immediately one devotee raised hand and says i don't believe it prabhupad because i know how much sins i have committed i was a sinful person till you know i became a devotee i have done so much how can you say that i have done good karma that's why i became devotee then prabhupad said i have given you the good fortune i have made your good fortune so guru maharaj liked that line so much when he heard it from prabhupada and he was thinking in his heart yeah it's true prabhupada is making good fortune for everybody around the world you know so many sins sinful activities people have committed but prabhupada is just taking that all away and giving krishna bhakti to everybody so then um, prabhupada uh, uh, guru maharaj had to come back from the kumbh mela trip uh beforehand the others stayed back with prabhupad but he had to come back because he was temple president for calcutta temple and the lease was expiring he had to renew the lease for the 3c albert road and so much work was there so he came back the funny part was that guru maharaj was removed as calcutta temple president 11 times every time tamil krishna maharaj who was his gbc removed guru maharaj from temple presidentship and every time prabhupad again reinstated guru maharaj as temple president but on the 11th time prabhupad removed guru maharaj from temple presidentship and now why that happened i'll tell you very interesting episode guru maharaj was a temple president and he wanted to follow prabhupad's instruction as it is so prabhupad had said devotee means he should be frugal he should not spend krishna's money unnecessarily we should be very careful in spending every rupee so guru maharaj was following that now guru maharaj was temple president so pancha dravida prabhu he came to guru maharaj and said i want to go for preaching please give me some money so guru maharaj said don't use car i'm giving you five paisa you go by tram he said no i'll not go by tram you give me 1 rupee i'll go by taxi guru maharaj said no you have to use tram take five paisa then pancha dravida prabhu said okay fine forget it i'll go by tram but you give me 1 rupee because my stomach is not good i want some yogurt so guru maharaj gave him 1 rupee so as soon as he got 1 rupee in hand he showed it to guru maharaj and said i will go by taxi okay and he left. then guru maharaj said he jumped guru maharaj jumped on him and tried to take that 1 rupee back from his hand 
and he was not giving it and guru maharaj was trying to take it back that i'll not give it to you you cannot go by taxi you have to go by tram so this snatching was happening and panchar driver prabhu he he just bit guru maharaj's hand very badly with his teeth so now guru maharaj was trying to move his hand but he had hold with his teeth so hardly guru maharaj was not able to take out his hand so guru maharaj hit him the na guru maharaj hit him this episode went to prabhupada so prabhupada got a telegram that jay pataka maharaj is beating devotees so then prabhupada said remove him immediately from temple presidency and then afterwards when prabhupada came guru maharaj showed him in fact it uh, guru maharaj said at least for 14 years that marks was still there of his biting so said, this is what happened you know prabhupada i have not uh, prabhupada said fine whatever it is now you you know you you concentrate on mayapur and he was uh, uh, removed from calcutta then um, um, prabhupada asked guru maharaj to come to bombay prabhupada said i'll i know you should become citizen of uh, india by the time guru maharaj has already learned bengali nicely and he was doing a good job and so prabhupada took him to nd desai's father that is our shrinath ji prabhu's father he was those days very active in politics and with his help you know uh, of course lot of things guru maharaj had to do after after his initial help to start the process they had to meet a dozen mps ministers and during that time guru maharaj also met atal bihari vajpayee he was a foreign minister so um yeah, guru maharaj spoke with him in hindi sab theek hai aap theek hai he said are you fine are you okay so that he liked very much atal bihari vajpayee he said are aap to hindi bolte hai oh you speak you speak hindi guru maharaj said yes and he was very happy because actually also it is a system if you want to become an indian citizen at least you should know one language fluently but whereas guru maharaj had already learned writing bengali also writing reading he was slow writer but he was able to write and read in bengali so finally of course um, when nd desai's father first met prabhu pads and guru maharaj and prabhu pad made one very um, important statement which is very important for all of us to know uh, he told nd desai's father that uh, jaya pataka swami is an eternal associate of chaitanya mahaprabhu so nd desai prabhu shinaji prabhu many times he talks about this he says that i was a young boy we were in office me and my father mother called that some swami ji has come please come so when we went home all of these people were sitting in the garden and then this swami ji tells my father that this uh, jay pataka swami is an eternal associate of lord and i thought what is this they're just trying to make up some story or what just to get some help i was not able to believe you know like that he tells his initial experiences and then how um, nd desai's father got very impressed by prabhupada he also took life membership and those days there were not many 100000 life members there were just few life members and he became life member number 32 he gave money to prabhupada and then he also helped uh, guru maharaj to become uh, citizen of uh, india and then there was this um, very big flood that happened in 1971 and that was very helpful one way to iskon because iskon started doing food for life they started feeding those people who were suffering from flood so guru maharaj was very active about it getting the groceries getting things and they used to give puri sabji khichdi and guru maharaj explains one very funny incident he said these villagers they were not patient if you ask them sit down we are giving you prasadam they should just get up and come with their plate like you know just like a Uh, falling on each other so guru maharaj said i used to tell him in bengali if you get up then we are not serving you food anymore we'll take all this food back you should not move from your place you sit in one place we will come and serve you so they used to sit quietly and then they used to serve but once it so happened padma lochan prabhu from britain britain he came he was visiting mayapur so he wanted to also distribute prasadam so he bought this basket of puri so he just bought this basket of puri and he kept it now he's just thinking that i am going to distribute so the moment he kept the basket of puri down for 5 seconds there was complete silence and after that it was a tsunami everybody jumped on that puri and the padmalochan prabhu was somewhere down on the ground everybody jumped within 5 minutes all the puri is gone and that time guru maharaj said no more puri for distribution they're getting crazy about puri is only kichdi will distribute so like that um, they did amazing amazing distribution in different villages and there that's where you know slowly iskon's name got better okay they're doing a wonderful uh, job there was one other uh, beautiful incident which was very heart touching for guru maharaj's um, prabhupad once got a letter from a husband and wife saying that um, prabhupad they were from west prabhupad we are struggling to become devotees 
but maya is very powerful it is distracting us sometimes we are getting defeated by maya but by maya but shila prabhupad we are determined we are not going to lose this um, fight with maya please give us your blessings and when prabhupad read that he was crying tears in his eyes and after that anybody who came to visit prabhupad prabhupad was showing it to everybody look how much they are struggling to become devotee it is so difficult to become a devotee in the west so much maya is there but see how much determined they are so when prabhupad showed this to an indian gentleman the indian gentleman also was so moved he said i am a hindu born in an indian culture but i am never you know uh, putting so much effort to stop eating onion garlic or to stop taking tea and coffee i'm just taking things so lightly but these westerners for them this is all so difficult but still they're going out of their way and trying to become good krishna conscious devotees and follow principles so prabhupad was so moved and and that indian gentleman was also moved that what wonderful um, effort prabhupad is making in making all these people devotees so guru maharaj uh, says that this incident moved him a lot that what a compassion prabhupad has he's crying oh these devotees are suffering they're trying their best oh you know they're trying sincerely but maya is disturbing them so you know i i was when i was reading this i was thinking you know probably that's why you know guru maharaj this the compassion that he shows because when he is talking about this incident gurumaj mentions this line that prabhupad wants to reach more to people who are unable to you know do it by themselves that means he prabhupad has more compassion for those who are patita means he knows it's it's not possible for them but they are still trying and prabhupad wants to help and we see same thing in guru maharaj's case also if we see he is always more kinder to those who can completely not do it in fact if you see some you know those who are happily going forward in krishna consciousness is happy with them but if he sees somebody is not able to do it he gives more energy more effort more compassion more time to those people and we always observe that in his general random interactions also he is more affectionate to them those who are not able to do he just tries to give his attention on them those who are able to do he is happy okay you are moving forward so he sees that that same trend you see that same compassion of uh, uh, shila prabhupad so well anyway finally became a citizen and then once he sent pictures to guru mara uh, once he sent pictures to prabhupad guru mara sent pictures to prabhupad of um, cement and steel and all that piles you know he just wanted to tell prabhupad that yes you know i am enthusiastically working and the construction is going on and prabhupad wrote a letter back saying i don't want to see pictures of piles of cement and steel i want to see buildings send me picture of buildings so then guru ma said yes we are trying we are working in that regard so anyway um and then um in the 1972 chota chota radha madhav comes to mayapur there was one indian gentleman had given three sets of deities of radha krishna one was sent to berkeley temple one was sent to boston and one was traveling with prabhupad so in 1972 god punima festival when prabhupad bought those radha madhav deities after that he never took them back he said now they'll stay here and you worship them so that's why i think we just celebrated the 50th year of uh, chota radha madhav's arrival in mayapur just a couple of days back in i think march 4th or 5th so radha madhav uh, worship started in mayapur of course and then again in the 1980s the big radha madhav came in 1986 the uh, four sakhis um, came and then later the other sakhis came and that's how slowly slowly mayapur started uh, um, developing um Prabhupad had given one actually there are wonderful letter um you know between Prabhupad and Guru Maharaj if we can read all those letters in detail i'm not able to go so much into detail because we don't have that much time also but wonderful wonderful instructions that Prabhupad gave uh, to him and then in this one letter he was saying that uh, Prabhupad was telling to Guru Maharaj that follow the principles properly and if we do everything sincerely what gaudiya mat could not do in 50 years we will do it in 2 years so i mean prabhupad had that um spirit of competition in a healthy way in a healthy way he wanted to do better so he said we should do it you know in mayapur we should make an impact in mayapur and then guru maharaj wrote one letter to uh, prabhupad saying that um, i'm getting too attached to mayapur is it okay i'm getting too attached to my service and prabhupad said you cannot give up attachment either you will be attached to maya 
or you'll be attached to Krishna. So if you are attached to your service in Mayapur, that's wonderful news. Looks like you have got attached to the dust of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. So this attachment is very good. Continue. And then he also complimented Guru Maharaj saying that in Mayapur there are no disputes. All of you are working in a very cooperative spirit and I am very happy about it. So maybe in some other temples there were some disputes but in Mayapur they were working in very cooperative spirit. So Guru Maharaj said, so Prabhupada said I am very happy. And then um, I hope in my class I am not you know, making Prabhupada Guru Maharaj words this way, that way because I am just speaking in a flow and we are so used to saying Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj that you know that word doesn't come for me Prabhupada. So then um, uh, Prabhupada also wrote a letter to Guru Maharaj saying that you should learn doll making. You know that means you should make devotees learn doll making that is because Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur was very keen about you know this uh, dioramas and he had also he in the 1930s he had hosted many exhibitions where these dioramas of uh, different lives of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna were presented. So he, Prabhupada wanted that that should be continued. So he told Guru Maharaj that you should, you know, learn this and you should make others, you know, engage in this doll making. I want that, you know, dioramas should be there on life of, life of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in one letter, he also gave this instruction to Guru Maharaj saying that I want this temple in Mayapur to be named as Mayapur Chandrodaya. So you start advertising about it. Henceforth, whenever you talk about Mayapur center, you should put this name, Mayapur Chandrodaya Mandir. So that was one thing he gave. Uh, and then um, uh, once something very very funny happened, I should, I should say this. Uh, there was this uh, Brahmachari, uh, his name was Sridhar Das. So he brought one very sophisticated Puri making machine. So all these brahmacharis in Mayapur got very excited. Wonderful, no need of making any more endeavor of <coughs> endeavor of making puris because this was just mixing the dough and the puri comes out. You know, the, the round puris will come out by themselves. So everybody got very excited with this machine and they were all enjoying hot, hot puris. They all sat in a circle and now the puri machine is making puris and hot uh, puris, you know, are served to everybody and they are eating with some jaggery or something like that. And uh, Prabhupada saw this from the window of the grass hut and he called Guru Maharaj and he told him, he said, Jaya Pataka, this is not a sannyasi life. Sannyasi is supposed to live simply. So, you know, that means he didn't approve of this puri making machine. So, then, uh, you know, Guru Maharaj understood. So, now somebody may think, but we thought Yukta, Vairagya and uh, utility is the principle and Prabhupada was always, you know, very happy if technology is introduced and try to make things more faster. But but Prabhupada was very selective about what should be introduced, what should not be introduced. In this case, he said this puri making machine will simply make our devotees lazy. So I don't want this puri making machine. And 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 I should mention this, which really touched my heart. This this four lines please dear devotees listen carefully he said something so nice he said <clears throat> better to take a difficult road even if you reach your destination late than to take a comfortable road which will make you forget your destination i thought this was so beautiful okay take a difficult road but at least you are conscious of your destination but if you take a comfortable road and you forget your destination, then what's the use? So, um, you know, now now we may say that Prabhupada said no to puri making machine at that time. But now we are having puri making machine, rice making machine, sambar making machine, alu peeling machine in Iskon. No, no, now situation is different then and now. So now let's say there were 20 brahmacharis there, but nothing much to do. And now even for Puri, if the machine comes, they'll become more lazy. But now even if um, 100 brahmacharis are there in the temple, 100 are busy doing something. There is a preaching department, book distribution department, this department, so many things. So now yes, you can get a Puri making machine because you have other things to do. But depending, depending on the situation, Prabhupada was making a decision that at that time Puri making machine was not required. They were not that busy that they can't make Puri by themselves. At least by making Puri, they were engaged in service of Krishna. So like that, um, and then in 1974 something special happened, how Prabhupada saw from his window that um, children were fighting with the dog for the leftover prasadam. 
Prabhupada was crying and he said please introduce food for life you know there should be food in you know in our you know you know 12 kilometers or 1 kilometer i don't know what was exactly that 10 kilometers or 12 kilometers or radius of any iskar i think 10 kilometers radius of any iskar temple nobody should go hungry so then uh, they started this um, because initially they were doing during the flood time festival time now they started doing every day so they started with 200 people came on the first day second day 500 people came so like that they started distributing prasadam in um, mayapur then prabhupad was upset about uh, bhakti vinod thakur's uh, statue that was put in yoga peet prabhupad said why is it put in you know as soon as you enter on the right side like a gatekeeper they supposed to give more respect to bhakti vinod thakur so like that whatever was in his heart during his stay in mayapur and those times guru maharaj was able to associate and hear all those instructions and prabhupad's heart feelings personally from him and then something very special was introduced that was nitai pada kamala the boat preaching of oh, that prabhupad was so happy with that they had these deities in the boat and there was food distribution in the boat and they were going from village to village and people were coming inside the boat and taking darshan and prabhupad used to call it jolly boat because every devotee who was doing service in that boat for some time was becoming so jolly and so happy and prabhupad the guru maharaj was sending prabhupad regularly report T- because at that time there was this bengali book translated called gita ar gyan so guru maharaj used send report 250 gita ar gyan books distributed three new devotees shaven headed they have joined and you know we have shaved their head three devotees have joined so like that all the reports were uh, being sent to prabhupad and he was very happy and then uh, already those days prabhupad had started speaking about the vedic planetorium the tovp which we see now he was talking about that at that time he wrote a letter to b r sridhar Ma- sridhar maharaj is god brother that um, you know my jay pataka my disciple you know he is already in the process and we are going to come up with this big temple i mean those days when there was absolutely nothing that vedic planetorium is going to come up soon and then gurmaj was also made a lifetime chairman for bhakti vedanta swami charity trust and this was just before prabhupad left his body in the 1977 prabhupad made this bhakti vedanta swami charity trust and the the main function of this trust is to revive all those places in navadvip mandal parikrama what we see in this navadvip dam there are so many places which we still haven't seen there's shri part of uh, you know so many exalted vaishnava acharyas and prabhupad wanted that this bhakti vedanta swami charity trust will give some money or uh, we will revive those temples repair those temples and i tell you personally i have seen this i don't know how many of you apart from our navadvip mandal parikrama what the places we go i think just last to last year just when the covid was little down myself and prabhu we went to so many places in the interiors interiors of bengal you know searching with this google and net and all shri part of lochanda stakur and narottam das stakur and all the vaishnava chats and we were amazed nobody knows these places you know even you as a local people also they don't know with lot of difficulty the driver was not knowing we went to those places you know like we went to krishna das kaviraj goswami shri part his family members that lineage is still there and to our surprise even in these interior places you will see there is a mandapam and there is guru maharaj name and bhakti vedanta swami charity trust they have made this mandapam and we were wondering when did guru maharaj do this so many places interior interior of so many places he has uh, given some money made some mandapam revived those places wonderful job has been done you know sometimes i'm thinking to compile this whole list and i'm sure they must be ha- bhakti vandana swami charity trust may be having some list and i think they should put it out for people to know so many places connected to the gaudiya vaishnava acharyas have been revived wonderfully so many nice nice mandapams have been you know and those places you cannot go by walk during navadvip mandal parikrama you have to take a car it's some hours drive 6 hours 7 hours 7 hours interiors we used to go every day early morning after mangala and we used to come back in the night and used to manage to see some two or three places three part of different vaishnava acharyas and such a wonderful job has been done by um, gurudev and then um, jail preaching started how the jail preaching started guru maharaj went to vrindavan to meet prabhupad 
and at that time news came that devotees in mayapur are arrested because some fighting happened with the muslims then gurumaj immediately ran back to mayapur now because they were in krishnanagar jail gurumaj was carrying prasadam and he used to carry so much prasadam that even the other jail members also were getting krishna prasad so they were becoming so happy so gurumaj was reminded of the haridas thakur how he was also put in jail and when he was in put in jail the other members of the jail became very happy because they got association of haridas thakur so same thing would happen in puri also our devotees were arrested and they were in jail and prasadam was supplied to them and they were supplying to others and giving them hari naam and when propat came to know this propat was so happy he said what jay pataka has done if i was in his place i would have also done that you know giving prasadam in the jail and that's how the preaching in jail started you know initially and of course then of course in chennai and other places um, so much wonderful preaching started jail preaching in very active way then um, in 1977 gurumaj became gbc there was one space um, in gbc there was one vacancy and prabhupad said that uh, i want to make you gbc so gurmaj became gbc for um, bengal and orissa then for assam then for um, east india then south india then he became for some places in west then of course later in south america and then so many other places and then gurmaj also became an initiating guru when prabhupad left before leaving body he had this 11 names whom he wanted to act as ritviks before he before i mean he leaves the body he wanted them to act on his behalf as long as he is alive but after that he wanted that they should all have their own disciples so uh, this 11 uh, gurus uh, and gurmaj was one of them who became the first initiating gurus of iskon after shila prabhupad and then 1977 just one day before shila prabhupad left this world on november 14th guru maharaj was given a check that go back to mayapur and make a bhajan kuti next to some pukur small pond he was given money you should go and do this and all he was instructed so he paid obeisances to prabhupad and he took the check and he left and when he reached calcutta he sees in the newspaper ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad has left the body he felt so bad i just missed it i was i was not able to be there near prabhupad on that last day i want to ask him so many things i never thought he will leave the body he immediately took a flight to delhi from calcutta to delhi and then he drove to vrindavan and by the time he came to vrindavan um already samadhi was uh, over and gurmaj felt very bad that he could not be there but anyway he thought okay no problem at least i will take those pushpa so whatever pushpa that prabhupad was wearing and prabhupad's one of the prabhupad's teeth and certain other prasadi things they put it in a golden box and then that guru maharaj and other devotees uh, they all carried it to mayapur for uh, pushpa samadhi which we see now in uh, mayapur the pushpa samadhi and then um, now they have to initiate prabhupad has left body now they have they are initiating gurus but gurumaj was not able to initiate because it was such a shock for him for some time it took him few months to settle down then in 1978 17th april in bhadrak first time gurumaraj gave initiation so his first three disciples were panchatatva das ram lakshman das and radha kant das he got they got the initiation then the second initiation ceremony again happened in calcutta in 15th of july the third, third initiation happened in 26th of august 1978 in mayapur and there on it's a history he's initiating and is initiating i think cross 51000 or 52000 i don't know but prabhupad had told him and bhavananda prabhu one time that look i made 5000 disciples you should make 10000 you should make 10000 and then he said why 10000 maybe 50000 you should make and that word guru maharaj had in his heart that prabhupad has instructed me to make 50000 disciple i want to do it and i think he already did it he already finished i cross 51 or 52000 so that's how gurumaj became gbc gurumaj became guru and then gurumaj started a, of course the ganga safari which we all know so famous famous ganga safari he every gor after every gor punima he takes devotees with him on a preaching tour to south india bangladesh narsimha yatra chaitanya mahaprabhu pastime places and not only it's just a you just a tour program it's a preaching program wherever he goes there will be pandal program there will be dramas there will be music night there will be classes so many things he will do harinam sankirtan political people will come and attend the program some big industrialists some big vips and do some preaching so the, and and at the end this ganga safari devotees they come back to mayapur and on guru maharaj vyasa puja day 
they're seeing this Ganga Safari song. Of course, it's not happening now because of COVID. And also after the stroke, also Guru Maharaj never stopped it, his uh, safari. And then, of course, we know about Guru Maharaj's Namahatta preaching, which is amazing because he came, you know, he caught hold of this Godrum Kalpavati book by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And from there, he took the inspiration and he started the Namahatta preaching and the Bhakti Vriksha uh, preaching. And then, of course, he translated and commented on the book by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the Godrum Kalpavati book and Bhakti Siddhanta Saswai Thakur's book, Vaishnav K and Srila Prabhupada's book, Vrindavan Bhajan and of course his Gauranga book. And apart from that, all his lectures are transcribed and so many small books are there and his question answer books. And I think now he's already working on another book, you know, which of course such a big list is there. What are the other books which are in the pipeline which he wants to do? And then, of course, he started this Bhakti steps, Krishna Sada, Krishna Sevak, and all those um, Prabhupada Ashray, Guru Ashray, and all. And then, uh, of course, the preaching in Middle East, I know, I mean, this the whole um, UAE and all those places there, his preaching. And then, of course, special mention about his preaching in Atlanta. Guru Maharaj first time went to Atlanta in 1981. Prabhupada had called Atlanta Temple as New Pani Hati Dham. And because Prabhupada called it New Pani Hati Dham, Balavanta Prabhu, who was the temple president of Atlanta, he thought our temple is called New Pani Hati. So we should actually go to Pani Hati Dham. So he took all his devotees, they came to India, they went to Pani Hati, they sat under that tree where Nitharanda Prabhu has sat, they took prasadam, they celebrated Pani Hati festival and they came back to the Atlanta and they thought every year we should do it very grandly. So first year, when 1981, when Guru Maharaj came, and he saw how they celebrate, okay, very nice. But then Guru Maharaj took over the celebrations and from 1983, it was a different story. It was such a grand celebration of Panihati with all new, new ideas every time and cooking himself. And, and then Mother Lori, uh, Guru Maharaj's mother had come for Panihati program one time and she gave an idea. You should uh, bid, you should have an auction for these uh, you know, whatever you are making this Pani Hati chipped rice. Uh, so then they started auctioning it and then so much fund was raised for the Atlanta temple and uh, Guru Maharaj, I think one of the favorite temple of uh, Guru Maharaj in the West is Atlanta. It's like his home base, you know. So that we should mention. And then, and then some uh, sad incidents, that is the Spain attack. Guru Maharaj got attacked in Madrid. He was in the airport. He's supposed to take a flight at 11.30. Some mad person comes and from back attacks Guru Maharaj. And then he was bleeding completely. Then he was admitted into the hospital. It took him some two, three weeks to recover. But then he again continued his preaching journey. But that during that time, it became a big issue. Somebody said that Iskan devotee has uh, cut Guru Maharaj. So then uh, some lady uh, parliamentarian, she started, uh, you know, anti-cult. She started talking that Iskan is a cult and see what is happening. And Guru Maharaj saw this in the news in the hospital, from his hospital bed in the TV, that such anti-news is coming. So Guru Maharaj wanted to clarify that he is not an ISKCON devotee who has cut me, some random person has cut. So immediately asked the devotees, please make a press conference. So they had a press conference inside the hospital room and then Guru Maharaj clarified that it was not an ISKCON devotee, it was some crazy man has, uh, you know, cut me. So then they, they, it got clarified that Iskan is not a cult and it's not that it's full of crazy people who do all kind of, you know, maybe some occultism or cutting throats and all. So that was clarified. And then the unfortunate incident happened on October 23rd, 2008, Mumbai, early morning, Gurmaj got a stroke in the sleep. When his secretary went to wake him up, Gurmaj was saying, help help he was saying help he couldn't understand what is guruma saying then immediately they called the ambulance took him to hinduja hospital gopal krishna maharaj called the dr ashok who is one of the very top uh, um, uh, doctors there and then th everybody had given up the doctor said nothing can be done for three days guruma was not moving it was lifeless then suddenly his thumb started moving Guru Maharaj wanted counting machine, he wanted to chant. Suddenly devotees got a smile, yes, there is life and he wants to chant. He wants to chant Hare Krishna. Then they gave him counting machine, he started chanting. And then they told the doctor, visiting doctor, that Guru Maharaj is chanting. They said, yeah, it's not possible. Yes, there is no life. No, no, he's chanting. Then the doctor saw, yes, the counting machine, the number is going up. He's actually clicking, he's actually chanting. So then, of course, you know, we all know how this miracle happened, you know, when everybody had given up and all the doctors have given up that there is nothing can be done. 
But Guru Maharaj recovered, then he was shifted to Bhakti Vedanta Hospital and then Radhanath Maharaj came to meet him and simply mentioned just to make him happy, do you want to come for Pune program? And Guru Maharaj said, yes, I want to come and he was serious about it and they had to arrange an ambulance and he had to some, he somehow went to that Pune program and for the first time he made a public appearance speaking with 2,000 devotees after the stroke. So he did it and then there was no stopping. He continued, he continued, he continued his preaching and then of course again he got a problem in 2018 because when he had got this attack in Madrid, they had done blood transfusion and they never knew that the blood that they had given to Guru Maharaj was contaminated with hepatitis C virus and that was damaging his liver over a period of time and 2018 liver completely damaged and he was on dialysis and then again that's a huge story miracle what happened and finally he got his liver transplanted and kidney transplanted and 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 the story goes on and the story goes on and the story goes on there's no end to him, his stories, his pastimes and his activities and then Corona and even Corona could not stop him. I think got two, three times Corona but in the unstoppable Jai Pataka Swami, nobody can stop him. And he continued and continued and more rigorous preaching. I mean, after Corona, more so, you know, he started this Zoom thing, which is so amazing, going to everybody. I mean, he was already in everybody's heart. But after Corona, he was also in everybody's drawing room and he was also in everybody's kitchen and he was also in everybody's altar every single day in Facebook Live and Zoom and, and reaching out to people. And now, you know, you know, you know, I mean, like, you know, I like this one statement that Guru Maharaj makes. He says, I am wounded, but I'm not out of the game yet. I'm still playing the game. I'm wounded, but I'm not out. And he's doing it. He is not out. He still wants to continue, you know, preaching and he wants to see this TOVP get completed and he wants to see all the temples, you know, in Iskon uh, flourish and, you know, preaching increase and he's always inspiring and attending every meeting. Every single meeting, whether it's SIDC or ICC or uh, AICC or uh, GBC meetings or uh, different committee meetings or preaching meetings, some, you know, people, devotees may get tired, but he is active in every meeting and he has a comment for everything and he has input for everything and, and he's going on and he's going on. So, um, that's it. That's it. I mean, we'll... I mean, we can't end it, Guru Maharaj passed himself like that, but somewhere we need to end it because <laughs> we have a time and, you know, but uh, Guru Maharaj passed himself like that. You know, we can continue and we can continue and, you know, on and on, meeting a, and giving his time and affection and energy and changing so many people's life every single day, every single hour, every single minute, he's making difference in so many people's life. So, uh, with this, I end it here. Uh, our dear Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hi Krishna. How I met him first time? It's, a, it's echoing for me. Oh my God. <laughs> first time that I, no, no, my own voice is coming back to me. Somewhere you'll have to you'll have to reduce the volume. Hare Krishna. Okay. First time I saw Guru Maharaj. Mm, I saw Guru Maharaj in Mayapur. But um, at that time, uh, it was very brief. For me, everything was new. I had just, uh, I had just um, got this prize trip. Because I scored, I, I was the first in ISKCON summer camp, so they gave this prize trip uh, to go to Mayapur with my family. So somehow that prize trip was during Guru Maharaj Vyas Puja. So we just, uh, I think just one day before, and on the Adivas night, we reached Mayapur. Everything was very new for us. We were staying in the Kaunch Bhavan. And next day we came to know that some guru, he is a, some, one of the, some guru in his khan and it is his birthday. So, we were not so much interested also, we just took Radha Madhav's darshan and we were just seeing and looking around and we saw, okay, somebody is sitting there, fine. 
and then uh, all this offering started i was a young school girl i think i was in class 7 or 8 so i i was trying to hear what is this offering going on but what i understood is uh, everybody who was starting the offering was saying that i'm so incapable of speaking i'm so fallen i'm so this but still i you know i have got this opportunity to speak about him so i will speak that's how they were starting and me and my sister we were giggling that if they really think that they are so incapable of speaking why are they speaking then why are they speaking you know if they really think they are incapable and my sister and me were giggling continuously you know what is this going on what are they speaking and we thought we are not interested and we were just running around in the temple hall and then this is what happened my first meeting was with with him was very far off he's sitting you know and then um, the devotee who took took us there my siksha guru after i think after that because it was very hot and you know we were sweating so we went back to our rooms and he brought a mahaprasadam for us from guru maharaj's plate so he came to our room in conch bhavan and he said this is a chocolate cake and this is from from the plate of um, our guru maharaj you know the plate which he eats so here this is for you and my parents took it immediately he did like this and my everybody took and he came to me and i thought i'm not taking it in my heart i didn't say it loud why should i take it from somebody's plate definitely i'm not taking it but i could not tell it directly because it's my siksha guru so i said um prabhu ji i don't like cake so he said but this is chocolate cake prabhu ji i ate so much prabhu ji now i i cannot take any more no i'm not asking you to eat the whole thing you just take a little bit prabhu ji i have eaten so much that smell also prabhu ji i may vomit no it's okay even if you vomit you take little bit i thought how can somebody be so pushy and if any for i want to eat cake there is a shop downstairs i can go and buy one why should i eat from somebody's plate and he was not leaving he said if you vomit also it's okay what this is very special this is very special you should take it and i thought he's not going to leave me till i take it so finally very reluctantly i took that mahaprasad in my mouth i think you can see the result today of that mahaprasad which i very reluctantly took on that day you know i had no interest whatsoever and then um, after that that day is over we took the i think that was ekadashi chocolate cake or what i don't know and then i was very young seventh class means you can understand my memory is also now fading you know then next day we went to uh, rajapur jagannath and i think we were I think we went in boat ride we went on a boat ride and and guru maharaj no, we were all we are supposed to get inside the boats so whichever boat guru maharaj sits everybody wants to sit in that boat only but what guru maharaj does after the boat is full he will get up from that boat and go and sit in another boat then everybody will fill up that boat so till the last time you don't know in which boat he is so somehow uh, you know when guru maharaj came and sat in one boat i also went and sat we were all sitting there so i was happy because now i saw him little bit from close corner huge personality wow and then he got up from our boat and went off and sat in some other boat so then we said okay fine what can be done so then the boat started he was on the other boat but all through this boat yatra he kept on throwing rose on me kept on throwing rose on whatever rose or whatever flowers that he had in his garden kept on taking out one one flower and kept on throwing it on me and kept on throwing it from the boat from his boat to my boat that was very special now see those days that much intelligence is not there and understanding is not there na so i was thinking i think i'm really special because he's throwing flowers only on me so many people are there is not throwing in anybody and i was a fool i could not have that much understanding that guru maharaj will do that and make everybody devotee you know it's not that we are special actually he is special and he wants to make all fallen people like us devotee but at that time i'm young so i'm thinking i'm special why is he throwing flower on me i was very happy and then you know i was going on looking at him and and the whole thing is this uh, psychological thing you know you want to if somebody makes you feel special you become you feel very happy about it so i was very happy then we had prasadam in the mango groves the rajapur jagannath temple and then how guru maharaj was behaving there but then we had group photo with him so like that more and more association uh, i was getting with him in that whole my put trip and you know, the way he was reciprocating talking asking questions and then after that immediately within 2 or 3 months he came to hyderabad for rath yatra 
and then um, my mayapur prize trip was over but also my shiksha guru wanted that i should get prabhupad's biography as a gift from um, guru maharaj's hand on the day of rath yatra or next day of rath yatra in iskon hyderabad they made a small stage so i uh, as a young girl i was very talkative and i used to speak 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 so many things so my shiksha guru really wanted that i should speak in front of guru maharaj so he announced after guru maharaj gave me prabhupad the leela amrita i have i took a photo i was happy now he said now she will speak on her experiences about summer camp so i am supposed to speak now that what was the summer camp and how and i you know how i'm so happy you know how krishna came in my life and all but i took that mic i started the first word you know krishna is and then i cried and i cried and i cried completely i started crying and i could not speak even one word and my shiksha guru was very disappointed that say say something say something drink water i could not i cried and cried then he took me upstairs to guru maharaj's room and then he was telling guru maharaj actually she speaks very well i don't know why she did like that but she speaks very well then i asked guru maharaj guru maharaj i don't know what but whenever i speak the word krishna or i try to speak something about krishna i want to speak guru maharaj but my throat is getting choked and i start crying can you bless me that i can speak about krishna because i want to speak but i am unable to speak so then he had this big danda of ours and he he you know hit on my head you know like this and then he was so compassionate and then he said yeah it happens it will happen and then he went on to explain what should i do of this problem which i was facing currently i was unable to speak always throat gets <coughs> choked always throat gets choked what should i do i start crying then he explained what i can do practically about it and definitely he gave his blessings so like that uh, you know interaction started and then you know it went on all because every year he used to come to hyderabad and i was, and as and as young girls you can do so many things uh, you know if you once you become elder now so now so much maryada is there and i cannot go and you know sit next to him and do all but as young girls oh my god i whenever he you know i used to hold his danda and hold his mala bag and hold his narsimha threads and especially in those days in hyderabad not so many devotees so he is going to the restroom or when he is just coming down so many times he used to give his danda to hold and is so hold and has to have so much fun now i think its things are very strict but those days it was not like that so i was to i when i went on a um you know a car ride with him that was more wonderful everybody in he was just going to sikandarabad temple from hyderabad and we were all standing you know just uh, waving him off he suddenly out of the blue he looked at me and he said you want to come i said yes he said come in come hop in that's it as really guru maharaj said come then i went and sat behind him in the dikki you know in, i don't know what you call dikki you know, in maruti 800 not you know it was maruti van it was a maruti van and in the dikki i sat and i whole journey from hyderabad to sikandarabad i thought i am the vip and i kept on speaking and i did not allow anybody to speak i kept on telling guru maharaj this is rtc cross road this is my computer center guru maharaj this is my school guru maharaj this is my this and we had a so and you should see his patience and you know hearing everything that i had to tell him and he was hearing and answering and encouraging and so many special things that he told me in that car ride which i can't tell this in one class but i think that car ride with him i mean uh, changed my life forever so many things that i asked him and i expressed and the way he responded and the way he encouraged me it's an amazing amazing car ride i can't forget each and every word of that uh, trip that i had with uh, guru maharaj it was only me guru maharaj and uh, prabhu there was no nobody else in the car and so many things he said so many and then of course many a times in life i asked him but in my the best interaction was school and college days that was the best interaction so much It was getting so much time i think after marriage and all you know then you will have to be in a certain this you know you are a married woman so he is a sanyasi so so many things but when you are a little girl you can ask so many things and there is no such uh, yeah so so many things like that so of course um, i mean some other day i can i can talk about it because it's not something that i can talk in a minute or so so many uh, sweet interactions and but after thing i think after i got married very less interaction became more like uh, management or just something like that but those days were more sweeter which because maybe um, um those days I, i could ask him the silliest question without any inhibitions now i speak with my brain my mind how can i ask guru maharaj like that but those days it is no mind you can ask anything there was no such uh, uh, yeah 
no such kind of consideration because I was also a child, so I thought I can ask anything. You know, I took that liberty to ask him. Yeah. Krishna, 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 Nagi.